welcome everyone and all i hope you are staying indoors and away from the cold because this is the first well not exactly the first but the first new episode of the all new all different bookshelf you know me i'm carlos Abdu, carlos asnable uh with me is the ever variable z slash gabriel LeMay. what's up how are you doing guys i'm Thankful to be here. Mm. All new, all different bookshelf with the same old hosts. What? For this, yeah. For this, for, this re, for this renumbering relaunch. Yeah, we decided to like streamline the cast, and yeah, it, it's pretty obvious. Just the 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 main two characters are gonna be there. We 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 had a you know a, a pretty prominent sidekick, but yeah, it it was considered to be racist to have an Asian accountant all the time. Don't worry, don't worry. If you guys climb in front and back, I'm sure he'll show up very soon. Maybe in a variant. We just to be sure. Let's make him black. Uh, he's half black. Even better. Two birds, one stone. Anyway, uh, let's. Why don't we just get into the biggest news that is coming out of February? It's Valentine's Day. You know what that means. You gotta take. I get to, f- I get to feel lonely again. Even better. You get to feel lonely while other people are taking their dragging their old girlfriends in order to see Deadpool. Rated R! Available in theaters everywhere right uh, since, what, Friday? You yeah, saw the movie. Much. Yeah, it was amazing. Uh, it's been doing amazingly well at the theaters right now. Well, I can't say I'm surprised. It is Deadpool. But I'm assuming most of those sales are coming from kids who are fans of Deadpool? As opposed to general pe- uh, audiences, or what? No, uh, no, it's, it's a lot of adults. A lot of adults. Besides, it's been breaking $200 million for opening weekend an R-rated movie, like, even better than, oh, uh, what is it, X-Men Days of Future Past did. I mean... Of course, it better. It better. It, it's breaking records, but on the downside, it's not making the Chinese money. Oh, uh, no. Seriously, not though, re- what? Re- Chi- no. China, 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 China's, China's not really uh, feeling the character? Uh, uh, no, I think, um, I guess they, they consider some of the jokes or something subversive. I don't, I don't know exactly the reason why they didn't want the movie in the country. But uh, they're usually I, a big factor in why some movies get get sequels. Uh, I did remember that there was some kind of rumor that China wanted to ban Deadpool because he thought it was too raunchy. They they, th- they thought it was too perverted and too violent for a quote unquote superhero movie. Yeah, they denied it due to the graphic violence. And I know there was another state that also uh, banned Deadpool. I forget what? it was Australia. Uh, what, what? Which one? Uh, I know why China did it, but another country did it as well. Uh, I can't remember if I say it's Australia or if it's um, man, what, what was that country's name? Not none, 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 none of the actual Koreas, but I can't really remember the name. But I remember reading on Reddit that there was a country that were planning to buy on the. Uh... Oh, now I remember. It could have been in part of the Saudi states. They planned to ban the movie because they also thought it was a little too violent, and they felt that some of the uh, stuff was a little stereotyping. So, yeah, I, I I totally understand. This is not. This reminds me a lot of their opening reception to Watchmen. I remember it completely. Me and my three friends were going to watch Watchmen. They insisted to watching it because that was the biggest release at the time, and it was my friend Dennis's birthday. And at that time, I thought, like, uh, you sure? Because just letting you know, Watchmen is not your typical superhero movie. And like, no, nah, I know it's rated R, but, you know, it's just going to be super violent and stuff. No, no, they didn't know what they were getting into. And then for the rest of the movie, it, I became, you know, your typical comic book bro in your, in your movies. Where everybody asks you questions non fucking stop to your detriment of the enjoyment of the movie. Where like, what's going on over here? Who are those guys? Is this Marvel or DC? Yada yada yada. Typical casual question stuff. And then some of my friends liked it, but Dennis himself wasn't exactly thrilled because it's not a superhero movie. So I feel Deadpool, despite his success, is, uh, is still struggling with that kind of stigma. But wouldn't you agree? Wait, how is it struggling with that kind of stigma if it's breaking records all over the place? 
is breaking records for an R-rated superhero movie, and it's showing that it could be done. But they are still people who are gonna go try try to see that movie, and the fact that China is not supporting it means that the stake uh, for superhero movies, especially Marvel superhero movies, is becoming a little formulaic. Don't what do you say? Like, what do you oh, mean by formulaic? The, like who? What audience are you talking towards here? Uh, a general family-oriented audience, or at least an audience consistent of tweens to college-age students, which is normally what Fox always aim for with their X-Men movies. It never goes below G to G, but it never goes above PG-13. Because they got to sell those with, uh, it toys. and mach- at 13. Yeah. It, 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 it always winds up trying to be this mass market thing. Here is Deadpool, unapologetically violent, unapologetically perverse. They were, this was something done specifically for the fans, especially the fan, you know, Ryan Reynolds, who've been trying to get this film off the ground for forever. And he got what he wanted. And now he's going to get more of what he wanted. But specifically saying, is everyone really going to embrace this type of film going into the larger Marvel uh, cinemas or some of DC stuff, which promised the whole was not a funny superhero movie, but you know, it's not impressively violent. Well, at least Zack Snyder keeps claiming it that. Well, I think part of the thing is that it may allow Marvel to, to go harder on more of the secondary characters. None of the main people, n- none of the main people you see as Avengers or whatever, but they may be able to go harder for secondary characters that show, don't show up as much. Or lend themselves to the stuff that, like, maybe. Right? <laughs> no, no, no. Well, well. Keep in mind two things. One, that option Marvel seems to be sticking that option exclusively to their Netflix deal. If there's something that is too hardcore or too R-rated for their family-friendly, formulaic Marvel films, that is sure to get boring within the next three or four years, then they stick that on Netflix. Second, while this is technically a Marvel movie, don't forget Deadpool as the the character falls largely under the X-Men umbrella. So Marvel doesn't really have so much of a say as the tone of this movie. They just had a say in the type of money they're getting. I guess part of the thing that I, I guess that I appreciate that came out of it is more that it shows that there's an appetite for this kind of thing, even though they get a fraction of the profits of, of that, that come out of it. But I'm more but in glad... Ter- but in, ter- in terms of quality, would you say that this is uh, better than whatever Marvel is doing or whatever Fox did in the past? Without, of course, spoiling, because I never saw the movie. It's very high quality. I'm not going to lie. It's, it's a very consistently very fun movie that has the kind of humor that if you like the kind of things that out of Deadpool, the character, you can enjoy. But I guess a part, a part of me feels that it's a hard thing to judge because it is a comedy and it depends on your sense of humor to enjoy it. But it's, a, it's exceedingly well made and because the sense of the character is very strong and like even characters like that show up as, as secondaries like Colossus. Colossus has, is an actual character. He shows up for like 10 minutes of the movie. He doesn't get development, but he's there. Ah, he seriously? Now I'm disappointed. I thought Colossus, Colossus would be... gets more out of this movie than he'd got in two X-Men films. Three. Four. Oh, he was that? Right. Oh, no, no, no. You're right. You're right. Colossus only showed up. A... Three. Actually, no. No, no, no. Colossus showed up at two, Was had a role in three. Then was a background character in Days of Future Past. Yeah, you're right. He was Colossus didn't even have a Russian accent in 3. He was just generic strong dude. Oh, God. Yeah. So this is, like, this is the first time they actually depict a comics-accurate version of Colossus. But only 10 minutes? I thought he was going to play the straight man, the Deadpool. He did play the straight man, the Deadpool. Several people played the straight man, the Deadpool. Ah, I see. It's going to be like that. And um, I don't want to ask much about Negasonic Teenage Warhead. She's there. But... She's fun. But I guess I like more Colossus' scene. Ah, uh, good to know. Good to know. 
But like, she was a really yeah, she's a really obscure X Men character. I didn't even know. I know they took that character specifically because they wanted an X Men character that nobody really fucking know, and they wanted to cast a good. They wanted a good female lead that's not going to be under scrutiny, so much scrutiny, and they just liked the name. So, are you telling me that it's hope? There's gonna be hope. Cannibal might get a movie. If there's gonna be a cable movie, and by the way, the uh, actor Stephen Lang uh, apparently is listening to the fan hype and is training for a possible role as Deadpool's favorite heterosexual life mate. And I, I, I guess uh, Rob Lee Field's uh, inner spirit animal. I thought his spirit animal was the pouch. Oh, that's true. That's true. Oh, I mean, one day. Or ironically enough, the the foot. No, one one day. I'm thinking, when it's all over, when it's time to finally bury good Mr. Lee Field, it has to be only in a pouch. We will, we will put his ashes in a, in a pouch of a giant oversized bandolier of, you know, with nothing with pouches and scatter them into the sea. Oh, wait. I thought the spirit animal was actually a, a Pepsi sponsorship. <laughs> oh man that's insane but yeah yeah hold up hold up I'll show you the picture right now guy guy looks uh, brolic I would like him to be Cable and okay one of the things that a lot of people a lot of fans has contention with with Deadpool is that they seems to be like very different interpretations so, oh, Stephen Lang was the guy who was Evil Guile in the uh... In, 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 Avatar, in Avatar, yes. <laughs> Evil guys. Uh, right, dude, he, yeah, it will work. It can work. And oh shit! Now you got me thinking. He's gonna be perfect as Guile if Street Fighter would ever, ever have a final finale. <laughs> no, it's never gonna happen. We're never <laughs> getting old man Ryu. We're never. I'm never getting Ryu final ever. God damn. No, he uses only extra costumes. Yeah. But no, but what I was saying is that there was a lot of interpretations of Deadpool depending on the writer. There's, of course, yeah, there the like, original Rob Lee Phil one that was like a barely main, a character. There's like a main four main four writers that they had for Deadpool. I know there was Wade, Way, Daniel Way, I think. Daniel Waypool, yeah, which and is more internet memes and silly stuff. That's there. There is. Um, I know there are another three, but I forget what they are. Joe so Kelly. Yeah, that's, that that's that that's one. what to consider the pure Deadpool. Cause yeah, like the one that's like a pair of two people. Pair of two people is it? No, the Joe Kelly and Ed McGuinness. Those were the creative team on the uh, reboot comic that happened in the nineties. That's where he got he kind of blew up. And then I forget if it was way if Waypool started on him, or there was someone in between. But I know Waypool is where he became. Like almost Wolverine exposure, but at the cost of his own wit. Like there was like very smart issues in the Waypool run, but at the same time, it wasn't as smartly written as the Joe Kelly run, which a lot of people don't like. I, I what what did you feel? How was the comedy? Was it was it witty? Was it more sophomoric? It was more sophomoric, uh-huh. and I feel that sophomoric works very well for this character because the jokes are just really, really well written. And you'll be able to find a chuckle like no matter your, your kind of humor. How how often they hit, that depends. But I think I think anyone will be able to find find the humor. Like it goes the the, the, the movie will go out of left field and hit you with stuff you didn't, you didn't even expect. It has a lot of jokes on itself on how pretty much uh it can only afford two X Men and about, you know, the other Deadpool that happened. Not bad, not bad. All right, all right. So, well, let me ask. Don't spoil anything, but does this movie lead into anything else? Or is it just a very standalone film that anybody can enjoy? He has a post credit scene where he says, yeah, we might have Cable in it, but it's not like setting up another fight. It's just Deadpool you know, making fun of you. <laughs> Gorgeous, beautiful, man. I cannot wait to see it. It's, I like, cannot... it's like, okay, we... uh. We kind of used all our budget, so um, you know, we might have something in the pipeline, maybe. You know, yeah, you, know, no, you guys no. expect these things, so uh, boom, just go home. We'll, we'll be back. Give me back. <laughs> great, great, nice. I love it. So I can't wait to uh, wait to see this movie. Also, uh, um, here's what's up. 
the weekend gross for this movie as of now is 135 million. And hey, Carlos, off the top of your head, what was the weekend gross for Winter Soldier? Hmm. If I remember correctly, 135 million. It was almost. I'm guess. I want to guess around the 200s or 190. Oh no! Winter Soldier's total was in the 259. It was 259 million. Weekend opening weekend, 95 million. So okay, so Winter Soldier's cumulative was two uh two fifties. Yeah, domestic. Wow. But the domest- No, you said domestic was 90. No, opening weekend. I'm comparing opening weekend of Deadpool to the other one. Aha. Uh-huh. Opening weekend and opening weekend of Deadpool is 130. We haven't even got to cumulative uh, this domestic release or international box office. Exactly. So, yeah, this is yeah. been hard, really hard. Well, it, it is a very it is a very strange time we live in. There are now more R-rated superhero genre uh, stuff that's going on, inadvertently due to Marvel's Netflix stuff. I know DC has been trying to go the dark and gritty route, but that's more like they're anally fucking their Batman franchise harder than ever. You mean, what do you mean by the franchise, Batman franchise harder than ever? They only have one tone, and that tone is... Batman. Serious. Every, no. everything, everything is in the shade of Batman. Bad parents everywhere, Carl's everywhere. I'm gonna bet you five dollars that one woman's mother is gonna be dead. Ah, uh, no shit. Origin is Queen Hippolyta turned to stone. Her dad is Zeus. By the way, the baby she's protecting is her dad. What? Yeah, Greek mythology's fucked like that. Wait, seriously? Yeah, that was the uh, Brian Azzarello run. Ooh. They decided, you know what, this whole made out of clay thing, that's not really flying for us. I want to tell, like, Game of Thrones, but with the Greek god, so... Yeah. Your father was Zeus. That's why you're better than everyone. Also, Hera was pissed and turned the Amazons into snakes and turned uh, Hippolyta into a statue. Oh, so this is also why she's not uh super ambassador? No, she's not Super Ambassador. She was not Super Ambassador in the beginning. In the Justice League, Johns, Jeff Johns just ignored that shit. He's like, I have no idea what to do with this character other than to turn her into Superman's cock sleeve. So I'm guessing, and I, I'm guessing Dark Side War is like his attempt to make a Diana-centric tale, but it's not really working. No. Uh, and you know, okay, okay, now I remember. It started yep. with Rob Liefeld and Fabian Nishia, who, you yep. know, went on to become top founders of Image. Then it went to uh, Joe Kelly and Ed McGinnis, who revitalized Deadpool as an action comedy and made him the Deadpool we all know and love. And then it was taken over by Christopher Priest, of all people. And yeah, he's found Kelly's issues to be complex and a little hostile to new readers like me, so... He started the boulder in which to make Deadpool a little more silly and dumb, which is weird because this is the guy who made Black Panther super complex and interesting. Oh well. Well, he was uh, trying to maybe he was trying to hit a different tone for the character because he was already known for being a fun character like that before, right? Yeah, and then you remember Agent X, right? The so-called reboot that they wanted to do for Deadpool, but nobody was really liking it, so it. You know, retcon it. I was written by Gail Simone. And then Fabian Nishia came back with Cable and Deadpool. But ultimately, that was more like a Cable book than a Deadpool book. And then that is where we get Daniel Way and Paco Medina. And ultimately, that became Waypool, another interpretation with the character. Now we're getting Deadpool hit Merc with mouth by Victor Gajizier. I have no idea who he does, but obviously they're going to try following way as most as possible. Well, and, given what you described with the other writers, I think it's pretty a hue closer to way. Yeah, way right now is the most popular among the kids. He's the one who got featured in Marvel's as Capcom. He was the one that was featured in the Wolverine versus Hulk thing. And the one that is mostly based the video game with the Nolan Nord voicing Deadpool. 
he he's the most overexposed version, the one that the common people would know of. So of course they will go with Dick Waypool. Anyway, yeah. Mad Max almost got almost got nominated for an Academy Award for Best Movie. Do you think that that is going to hit a run with uh, R-rated action movies in general? I think it's kind of been a, it hasn't kind of been a, a long-standing thing where many of the uh, larger la- larger big budget action films are usually not eligible. Maybe you're not. I would say kind of discriminated against being nominated uh-huh. for, an, for, for for an Academy Award because it seems like uh, they edge towards preferring, I guess, more introspective character dramas, emotional fare, as opposed to those things that tell a big, loud story. But like doing them really well is a thing on its own. Mm. I guess part of the part of me feels like when we think of these things, like we 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 kind of think like a person chooses these things, but these are chosen by pretty much like popular vote of people within the industry. So it may be that uh, the uh, the group of people in the academy has changed their opinion of what larger what larger action fair can achieve that that is worthy of being able to tell stories on a high level as as well as dedicated emotional fare or or they're that desperate for viewers that they will take any film that's popular with the kids and what's it called Fury Road that was extremely popular among everybody can't lie that was like that was the movie that everyone was trying to quote and nobody wanted to say anything bad against that because most of the movies that was uh, elected by the fa- academy was either you know, your typical story of heroism or story of I- intimacy. Okay, it's the movie that you didn't fucking see. I can guarantee you a lot of people only saw The Revelants be- once they realized it was a nominated for an Academy Award. Well, that happens to many of them. Uh, it's, it's pretty much a sales boost, regardless. That's true. If you get, if you get nominated, your DVDs get... If you get nominated or get a, uh, get a, get a definite Oscar... All, all merchandising with regarding, with regarding those films get a sales boost. I know that. But uh, on the other hand, it's like, I guess I, I was just weirded out that the fact that a popular movie, like a, a popular movie among the general populace, a blockbuster, would get nominated for an Academy Award. So it gives me hope with uh, Deadpool that maybe, just maybe, more different genres of superhero films can be acceptable instead of just following the basic Marvel pattern or going with DC and doing the zap opposite. What is it with DC Comics and just crashing and burning when it comes to trying to gain the, the social acceptance of the general populace? It's like they do, they try whatever they can and it fails. New 52, that was just a thing and then it'll stop. Having Superman lose his powers, that was cool and now they're bringing, that's going to be quitted out. Making Green Lantern do a popular thing that only lasted for a few months. Ugh. The whole Man of Steel, the whole DC uh, cinematic universe seems to be like something that your 12 year old brother would have designed while listening to Linkin Park or something. Ow, the edge. What are you talking about? Everything's... I was trying, I'm trying to, we're trying to show his emotional you know, kind of complexity by having his father, uh, you know, himself die. Yeah. Yeah, see, Christopher Reeve would have actually exposed himself to that and... Or he would have turned the world around and saved him from the hurricane. That's a different era of comics, though. That's a pre Dark Knight Returns world. You're not, it's not coming back, Carlos. I'm sorry. Marvel and their billions of dollars say differently. Although, we're going to get to that in a little bit. My concern with DC, and I'm really hoping that uh, our other member was going to be here to talk about this, was that DC doesn't seem to get a younger audience. And whenever they try to do something, it almost comes off the another extreme whose only relevance is just shock value. It's a ex- very, very, very old way of marketing when it comes to comic books. And like ultimately, it just lost its way. What I'm talking about, of course, is uh, DC announced a line 
based on the Hanna Barbera uh, licenses that they have. And yeah, ultimately, who who, who, who who wants this? Who? No, no one. Well, though, depend on the title. And by title, I mean there was only one, one good title. No, no, nobody else wanted anything else. First off, proving that DC is completely cr- or creatively bankrupt, the first title will be called Scooby Doo Apocalypse. It is about the Scooby gang turning themselves into some kind of tech guided super spy agency that is also trying to stop zombies in the, the apocalypse. I don't know. Oh, I, I, here I thought I was, I was hoping for a crossover where the Scooby Doo gang goes to apocalypse. Oh, now, now this seems less funny. No, it gets, it's even worse. It's the Scooby gang redesigned by Jim Lee. With all the terrible cavites that come with that. Lots of jackets? Pouches? Jackets, pouches, unnecessary... You know, Scooby, t- no, uh, 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 on Scooby, there's like some kind of cyborg eyepiece attachment on him. And Velma, of course, has this, the impossible uh, laptop that has robot arms and uh, holographic heads-up display. Just, just to say that she's nerd. Oh, and it gets worse. Shaggy goes from being a hippie to a hipster with a full on beard. That 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 is reasonable. That is not reasonable. No, no, no. Scoo- Shaggy's whole thing is that he is a stoner. He he is not a hipster. He does not get tattoos. Modern Shaggy is is a hipster because he's he's probably from Colorado. It's now legal. It's it's lost his edge, and so has he. Oh, no. So now he was only going to smoke pot and get or- organic brownies with marijuana. Not because it makes him have good times. It, it makes him feel high. No, no. Now he's going to do it to make a statement. Also, no, Chaggy with on. a beard? Come on. Come on. He doesn't eat Scooby Snacks anymore even because, you know, it doesn't have canola in it. I don't have quinoa. Huh? Quinoa. It doesn't have quinoa or quinoa. How do you... Quin- Qu- quinoa, quinoa, quinoa. Exactly. If it's not organic, non-GMO quino- quinoa, it's it's not worth it. I'm sorry. <sighs> He's above all that now. Still a coward. Is, coward is he? Is he? Take a look. Take a look at Jim Lee's redesign for the upcoming. Oh, a, a, a just in case. They're not fighting monsters. They're fighting evil fleshy demons or something. Wait, why does why, why does everyone have guns? Why does why does Scooby have a cybernetic eye? Why is Velma lowly? Why is Velma lowly and Luca in that she's a technopath? And finally, yeah, hipster Shaggy. Hipster Shaggy. Scooby Apocalypse is basically what it says it was. The one that it does intrigue me a little bit more is The Flintstones by Amanda Connor. Yeah, who, I, like, I like Amanda Connor's art. I think she could work with this. Uh, I like, I like, I don't know, I like Fred's look in this. This, uh, he's, he's kind of got that sleepy, uh, Al Bundy kind of, kind of look. Uh, I'm not exactly sure. I, I don't know. Yes, having grow up with the, the regular uh, Flintstones. I'm not exactly sure turning them into accurate, accurately um, ish, accurate ish. Yeah, accurate ish figures in a semi-realistic caveman time would be. Yeah, yeah. I, I, I don't know. Something about this that irks me. And then, of course, yeah, sure, wacky race land. That's going to be based on Mad Max. Of course, it's going to be based on Mad Max. Oh, they have, but they have, but they have Johnny Quest. Yeah, that's the only thing that seems to be the the one shining silver lighting in this entire thing. It's basically the big Hanna Barbera action team up that everybody will have been waiting for. You mean Future yeah. Quest is a big is a big team up thing? How, do you see the image? And it's and it's drawn by Darwin Cook. Oh yes, he's perfect for this. Basically, Johnny Quest and Haji and the rest of Quest Industries 
run into a big scheme that eventually would involve everyone. Space Ghost, from... Hawkman, who is sadly... No, no, Birdman! Birdman, who is sadly not an attorney in this case. No, that's true. I hope it'll make it a reference. Galaxy Trio, the Herculoids, Mitor, even freaking the Impossibles. I have no idea who those guys are. Yeah, they were like a Beatle ripoff that also were superheroes. It, it was weird as shit. Wait, uh, if they're a Beatles ripoff, wouldn't they be like the monkeys where they're corporate created? Kind of. They're like, they they were the, okay, they were the Impossibles, a band who were like the Beatles, and then they were the or Impossibles, a bunch of super secret agents who are also superheroes who fought crime, and nobody could figure out which was which. I kid you not. I don't know why. It was uh, Fluid Man, Coiled Man, and Multi Man. Yeah, I'm glad they're only second in this. And finally, Frankenstein Jr., which I'm guessing now has been turned into the Iron Giant. But I don't mind I, that. I don't even know what that was originally. Uh, Basically, Giant Frankenstein plays Gigantor to a little kid, and they fight giant monsters. There was a lot of weird shit over at the Hanna Barbera action team, but I'm I'm liking this, and hopefully, yes, we're gonna see Birdman finally team up with Space Ghost. I mean, a part of me is hoping I will I finally have hard hitting legal drama I've wanted all these years. But okay, they can go punch something. I I was hoping I was hoping that Space Ghost was in, in, interviewing Birdman, who would then pimp his uh, emerging law practice. Or worse yet. Space Ghost gets a cable news show, and he teams up with Birdman by Space Ghost, kills him in the media, Birdman kills him in the courtroom. Perfect team up. It's perfect. It's perfect, but I know we're not going to get that. No. Hopefully it's going to be like that Space Ghost comic. You remember that one, right? Alex Ross one? Yeah, the Alex Ross one. No, I know it exists. I never read it. Oh, uh, basically, they... Take a gander at, what was it? I think Joe Kelly actually wrote this one. They took a shot at actually giving a full origin to Space Ghost. That he used to be, he was a cop who believed in the law and justice. But then he found out that the law is corrupt. And they killed his family and left him for dead. He was a ghost. But then he wound up in a planet conveniently with some one with one guy who made all of his weapons for him. And then Thaddeus Thaddeus Ghostel or I forget his real last last name, but Tad Ghostel became the Specter of Vengeance known as Space Ghost. He was trying to get revenge. But then all of a sudden a, a colony was being destroyed by the swarm called the Zorak. And oh, Space Ghost. Oh, he's going for a uh, for a hive mind thing going on. Hive mind thing, yeah. Like Main Zorak is like the main leader, but whenever Main Zorak is killed, uh, a lesser Zorak evolves into Main Zorak. Everyone is Zorak, and also, yeah, he 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 killed that one dude. He he struggles between getting revenge and trying to protect the the orphans that he protected. Name what's it called? Jan and Jan and Jace. Wait, so yeah. they, they're they're full fledged sidekicks, though, right? Yeah, I don't see a monkey. I'm not sure if there was a monkey. I I don't remember, but they had the the power gauntlets, the power bands. They had uh, the invisibles. They had lots and lots of gratuitous death. And finally, Space Ghost manages to let go of his fear and started constructing his headquarters in Ghost Planet. And that was it. It was only six issues. So what else we got going on? Um, ultimately, what do you think overall of this whole Hanna-Barbera thing? Or just DC's uh, attempts in general at trying to find attract attention? This is just attention whoring at this point. Yeah, um... I guess just off of off of like just a naked off the gut reaction, I feel most optimistic about Flintstones, and that's really about it. These other things seem more like a weird grab bag, partially because Zo- Scooby Doo seems like it's trying too hard because everything 
everything just seems really off. Like I, I can recognize that they have the characters, but something about this seems like it's not missing the point. Yeah, they're going they're going too contemporary, and it's like it's not really hitting that sweet spot of understanding what people like about it, but modernizing it with it's still uh, recognizable. Uh, also, I think it's because someone beat them to the punch, and it was called Scooby Doo Mysteries Inc. Yeah, but, but DC, you know, they have to reinvent the wheel. Also, Future by calling Quest, it Scooby Scooby Doo Apocalypse, seems like uh, yeah, Future Quest seems like a really big grab bag. It feels too big to work. Because it has a lot of these recognizable characters in it, I know. I know more or less Johnny Quest and his crew are going to have the majority of the, of the face time. I don't know how this is going to be able to work. Are, are they going to be going from adventure to adventure, involving each of these things as they go? I don't even know. That's the mystery. That is the mystery. Like, uh, it seems I, like yeah. It seems like one of those comics where you're going to see just a lot of splash pages, but the action's not going to be coherent. Well, what like Darwin Cook. Those splash, I, I really doubt there's much splash patient because he's a very good master when it comes to uh, sequential telling. Uh, I, I'm certain sure there's going to be like a lot of great action, though. Yeah, I can guarantee that. Uh, I wish it the best, but uh, I just want for my Harvey Redman, Attorney at Law, comic form. Let's put it back. Put it back. Ah, uh, no, unfortunately, you're not getting that. You can join the other, the rest of the junk jarred of attorney uh, stuff, like a second import of the second Miles Edwards game, that Japanese Ace Attorney game that's never going to come out ever. Yeah, I can hear my brother moaning in, in this disappointment. Hell, Ace Attorney Six. Yeah, I, I, I'm, I'm be surprised if we get that by the end of the year. What seriously? They said they was coming in English. But they said that a long ass time ago. It's still, it's still within the quarter. It can still happen. It can still happen. Delayed. But yeah, hold up, hold up, hold up. All right. So DC doesn't really know how to catch attention. But lately, I've been noticing that Marvel's having trouble keeping attention, at least in terms of their movies. Like, let's not lie. From Iron Man three, and you know. Skipping Winter Soldier and Guardians of the Galaxy, their stuff have been a little, I don't know, on the weak side. Wait. No. No, you can't do that. You can't do that. That doesn't make sense, Carlos. You can't ignore pieces against your point just off the bat. You just did that. Can I just count the majority and just those two are like very strong exceptions to the rule? If they're strong exceptions to the rule, they allow you to pretty much keep chugging along. They buy you two movies. They pretty much buy you two movies of goodwill apiece. I'm just saying, like, compared to the genuine surprise you can find in Iron Man 1, 2, even films like Thor and Incredible Hulk, the first Captain America, and of course, the Avengers, it just felt like a lot of the Phase 2 stuff was just going through the motions. Iron Man 3 was, it was successful, but people thought it was the worst of the trilogy. Thor 2 did below expectations and only was kept aloft by the Hiddleston fangirls and Thor fangirls. Yeah, the Hemsworth fangirls. Captain America Winter Soldier was the genuine surprise because, you know, people had an average reception to the first Captain America movie. But this one, it was the one that completely changed the game and says that Marvel can t- do a very serious film. And Guardians of the Galaxy changed the way characters can be film exploitable, which, you know, would give the um, green line stuff like Deadpool because who the hell knew about the Guardians of the Galaxy before the movie? And, and, and also green light is stuff like Ant-Man, but Ant-Man, for as much fun as it was, it was also painfully average. And then, of course, there's the disappointment of Avengers 2. It was good, but it's Avengers 2. It, it, it was barely nothing. And now, you know, they're planning more and more and more and more Marvel films on the way. If the all eyes are on Civil War, which a lot of people, before they saw the trailers, thought it was too much, it was too little time. 
And of course, you have the other stuff heading into Avengers Infinity War, which is now getting two parts. And you gotta wonder, how long can Marvel keep this thing going on? Uh, I'd say, real talk, good or bad, no matter what, five years. Five years, huh? Like, this is like, this is like worst case scenario. They can go for another five years. They have, um, they have they have enough goodwill built up to be able to keep doing, even at an average at an average quality, as long as they go at a consistent clip. Hmm. I suppose so. Brand is strong enough. That's that's the main thing. If the brand is strong enough, you're able to do a lot more. <sighs> I really hope Civil War defies expectations and is another good Captain America movie. I'm I'm saying they're putting way too much eggs in one basket with this movie is a captain is a sequel to winter soldier but it's also kind of avengers 2.5 with avengers fighting other avengers then it's setting up black panther then it's setting up spider-man and Uh, then it leads in i'm thinking more or less it's going to be a glorified cameo that happened way too late in filming for him to be like yeah to the plot I don't know. Marvel could have actually cut up a lot of key parts just to get Spider-Man to do something. I'm just saying, Marvel is not above doing that. Oh, that's gonna that's gonna make for really. You're gonna feel it. You're gonna feel it if they do that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I I felt that. I felt that when they had the Ant Falcon cameo over at Ant Man because it felt like, look, okay, we're gonna go with Edgar's script, but we need at least one set piece. Or, or one sequence that confirms that Ant-Man is going to be an Avenger. We need to tie this to Avengers somehow. And they had that. Again, they couldn't get anybody else. You know, did know this on uh, Falcon. I like him. I like him better as Captain America. I wish he stays Captain America. I nope. wish he's... I yeah. wish he's... <sighs> yeah, but... I don't know. For some reason, we, we had this conversation before, but for some reason, I feel in 2016, the most appropriate Captain America is kind of a person of color, regardless whether he's African American or uh, anything else. Yes. Ambig- or what, Vin Diesel American, where he's of, of an ambiguous race? Like, you know, Rocky America, where, <laughs> you know, he's black or Samoan. Maybe Mexican? We don't really know. People don't know because people don't know. People who are not people who are not wrestling fans don't know who Samoans are. <laughs> they don't even know what a Samoan is. Is that a Hawaiian? Oh no, it's a Hawaiian kind. but fatter. Yeah, it's like Hawaiian. Kind of, yeah. But yeah, this is what I Yeah, I believe in 2016 we have evolved beyond the concept of turning Steve Rogers into a straw man to or whatever political argument that a writer is trying to do this time. Nope. Mostly because that's the Captain America everyone knows. And the original conception-ish of most characters is usually what stays. Uh, if we I'm... push in Hitler, it's like there, there is no other government type thing you can, we can work with that. You don't get as black and white as punching Hitler. You don't, you don't step back from punching Hitler, Carlos. Uh, um. It's not, and wait. it's not like, uh, and it's not like you're gonna have anyone do any. I'm gonna punch ISIS comics anytime soon. I want no, it. No, they 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 tried that. They tried that when uh, after 9/11. They tried Captain America was a terrorist, but that only has lasted as long as the anger lasted. And yeah, that 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 was, that's what I'm talking about. That every time, you know, there's some uh, some kind of political controversy. They always find a way to adapt Steve Rogers' character, a dude from the 1940s, into, you know, whatever political mouthpiece. Oh, Reagan is too conservative. Uh, so let's make Captain Liberal. What's it called? Liberals are going too crazy. Let's make Captain con- Conservative worried about security and the law. This whole Civil War thing. Security well, versus freedom. Like, uh, these are the kind of the things that Captain America works best in because he's a character who is, yeah, he's literally ideal as made incarnate. That's being true, but also, so his pretty much, sec- even if you're tired, even if you're tired of it from a perspective of reading the stories, like, that's part of the S character where he works strongest. Captain America is the America we want to be, and he fights against the America that we are. That's, that's, I, I would rather have a Captain America the, the, uh, that it's the America who we are. 
Because I find some of his successors, his various successors, Steve Rogers' successors, a little more interesting than Steve Rogers himself at certain times. We have infamously, you know, the 50s cap, which was Captain America versus the communist threat. And like McCarthyism, that went a little too far. So he became a, a supervillain. We have 80s conservative cap, John Walker, better known as U.S. agent. He was basically cap if he was a Republican. And he had some interesting stories, not just as uh, Captain America, but as U.S. agent as well. And, you know, he provides a very good counterpoint as, you know, the rival. He, he, he's not a bad guy. He just has a different way of thinking. Bucky, and, uh, I, I would say he's, he's yeah, interesting. Bucky's more, Bucky's more oh, what is it, uh, compromised in a different way. Yeah, Cause Bucky he's, didn't... Because yeah. he's, he's kind of a Cap who had to redeem himself, but I don't know his character as Cap because I didn't really read read that stuff. I, I read his character as Cap, and yeah, it was more about redeeming himself. It was more about exposing the corruption in American government as opposed to confronting the American government with a counter-ideal. He was less about the ideals and more about the action, but it, 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 it was appropriate for an America going after, you know, post-Bush, nobody really trusting what the government was doing. This whole security thing was going all, all overboard. So maybe they needed a Captain America who was a little bit darker, edgier. And then, of course, at least in Sam Wilson, who is now completely on the liberal side, going against supervillains who are trying to deport illegal immigrants, going after the 1%, and doing so publicly. And now he's getting hated on. In, in comic, he is getting hated on, not just by the racist bigots, but... By, by regular people, because it's like, wait, don't we pay you? Like, aren't you supposed to enforce the law? Like... Yeah. Like that's one of the that that's one of the things where like you actually have an argument there where it's like, like that's cool and all, but well, other than civil war, where it's like, don't we don't don't, don't we pay your bills? Like, why are you doing this? No, no, you don't. No, you don't at all. I'm doing this pro bono. So why are you telling me what to do? Cause cause you know you blow up shit, and we had we had to use taxes to pay for that. So <laughs> you you mind? What why don't you want to get a paycheck? Because it comes with compromises, and I don't want to do that. I don't know. <laughs> exactly. So I, imagine if civil like, war. I don't, want, I don't want to do this job either, but I got a mortgage. So you shut the fuck up and take and deport those taxes. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Like most, most of it, it got to a point where Fox News, of course, Fox News got on uh, Sam Wilson's case, and like you know, they they gave him even more attention than uh, the character initially uh, was made for. But that's what got me thinking. Like, some of the most interesting Cap stories involved with Cap from alternate dimensions or alternate futures where all of a sudden Cap is not this white dude from 1940s America. He is a woman. He is a Mexican. He's an Asian. He's like, whatever America needs a Captain America. I think Captain America should be more of a mantle and should be personified with whatever is the ideal America of that era. Amer God help us all, but imagine if Donald Trump was president. Who the hell would be a Captain America of that era? Tony Stark. Or Elon Musk. I want to fight. You want to fight wealth pompousness? More wealth and pompousness. So Bloomberg? Oh, God. Oh, God, that hurts. <laughs> okay. Okay, you hit, me, you hit me pretty good with that one. <laughs> It gets even worse when you realize he's actually thinking about running for office. Like, I know I should congratulate you because you're the anti-Trump, but Trump Pat. versus Bloomberg is equals more also, Trump? Uh, also, Trump actually has, um, how do I put this, a recognizable personality to most people? Whereas Bloomberg is... He's efficient, like, but totally bland. Exactly. Like, he was mayor of my city. I, I didn't notice. I guess he didn't notice because he was I, – I noticed his, his actions. I noticed what he did. I didn't notice the man himself. Yeah. What about if Sanders win? I mean we already kind of have a, a very you know socialist-leading Captain America. He's historically socialist. But what about like a super socialist Captain America? A guy who's uh, against big business. 
the corporations. You mean like 1940s recipe Superman? Wait, original recipe with Superman? Yeah. Where, yeah. He, where he, he'd, he'd beat up people who don't, pay, who don't pay their work as well? Yeah. Yeah, like Captain America just goes off the grid. N- none of this Avengers crap. He goes full on vigilante mode and fights for the American way, no matter who gets in his way. What do you think about that? Wait, that was Nomad. You want that again? Seriously? Oh shit, that was Nomad? That was Nomad. He he, he gave a B in America because Reagan, apparently. And, <laughs> you know, dish it on his own and change to have a yellow and blue costume. And then yeah. he became like Renegade. He was a Renegade. <laughs> he was Renegade before there was a Renegade. He was, he was driving around America, punching people in the face. I mean, <laughs> Captain America, so, you know. Huh. I, I guess that's just how I feel. I, would, I wouldn't I would mind if it was like, you know, Wally West and Barry Allen. We had Wally West for 10 plus years before Barry Allen made his big comeback. So I would not mind if Sam Wilson stayed a while and oh, be the main hey, cat. Hey, Carlos, you hear that? You hear that? Do you hear that, Carlos? Nani? Nani it's, the, uh, it's, it's, it's the movie train. The movie train is coming. I, I think Sam Wilson is going to have to get out of the way. The movie train is going to run all over. I'm sorry. Yeah, exactly. For all their talk of progression, doesn't mean jack shit when the movie train comes in the way. Hey, because those are the recognizable versions of those characters. I'm sorry. Real talk. Sam Wilson? I like Sam Wilson being Sam Wilson. Cap, uh, Cap kind of defaults in the 1940s. Like, all right, you don't step back from punching Hitler in the face. It's too iconic. That's true. Now, how pissed, how pissed off are the family that's going to be when they replace uh, Girl Thor with regular Thor once Ragnarok shows up? Are they buying those comics right now? I was like, those, they're, how, they're how, the one. how are the sales numbers? Sales number are more or less average. But they're the only ones more kind of marketing the comic. And like every time someone wants to market Thor, that's kind of the hammer they punch you in the face with. It's a girl. Feminists would love it. She also has cancer. So she's also a strong female. But it's not bringing... I, I thought the sales numbers have been declining on the book, so... And I go back to, they're going to go back to default as soon as next Thor movie hits, which is next year, right? Yeah. Iron Man. Uh, Real life uh, films write the plot, so. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Also, yeah, all new, all different, only lasts for about a year. About as much as most gimmicks do. Uh, yeah, yeah, that, that, that is true. That is true. Because, like, mean... it's, like, some, sometimes you can make dr- drastic changes to a character and people can attach themselves to it, but not like this, man. You know, but char- that, that, that seems you know, to be Mar- Mar- Marvel's, like, instant success. Uh, we need to revive a character. How are we going to do that without actually making any effort? Okay, affirmative action, check. Tumblr stereotype, check. Uh, I don't want to gonna... be that flip into it because... They literally, um, make a, they literally make a character, Gwenpool, just because it's easy to cosplay. It, that's, just cross promo- that's just good cross-promotion. That is, but... The... That's, also good, that's also been good for Batgirl and Miss Marvel. Like, these are, these are good things, but yeah. Gwenpool's kind of weird because I was like... Wait, they have Spider Gwen. Okay, then Gwenpool is like, wait, this is some other girl who has Gwen as a name. What's going on? You're not even from an alternate. No, no, I'm just from the real world. I got these power, and I know how to use comic book logic. Fun, but I was like, why are you using the same name? Because oh, they they originally made that character to be alternate Gwen, but they realized they had to backtrack when they realized, shit, no, that's. The whole premise before between Spider Girl, people are gonna call us out and say, "Yeah, you're you're writing this Gwen Stacy thing a little too hard." Amazing Spider Man well, too. I did see like uh, someone made an image of like Gwen the Gwen Avengers with with Iron Gwen, Captain America Gwen, uh, Hulk Hulkman. <laughs> yeah, no, no, that was part of the Gwen Stacy variant month. Where almost every comic had a cover replacing Gwen as the main character. Yeah, and now there's going to be another spider event, but coincidentally, just with the girl spiders. 
Because it's Gwen. Wait, not even like Silk and... No, 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 yeah. Julian ba- basically, basically, it's just uh, Silk, Spider-Woman, and Aranya team up with... Uh, randomly decides to visit Gwen's universe for reasons... I think like a baby shower for Spider Woman's uh, new form baby. Yeah, it's very. It sounds very stupid. But they needed something to in order to keep these titles relevant, and the only reason they keep it relevant is because they need Spider people who has a vagina. Ugh. Yeah. I, I, oh, yeah. Whatever happened to Carol? Carol Carpenter as as Spider Woman. Oh, you mean Jessica Carpenter? Yeah, Jessica Carpenter. Sorry. Uh, she dropped out. She had, like, one thing, and then all of a sudden she had, like, a guest appearance in Deadpool and Daredevil. And eventually, you know, she just dropped out because nobody wants to touch any character from the 90s. Whatever. Whatever. This is what what I'm talking about. Like, whenever a character has to be revived, they're always just meant to feel a niche as opposed to have any depth. Well, that's not necessarily that they're that they're old. They get depth, but I don't know. I don't know if they'd work with that. Maybe they want to just get a get a fresh character because there'd be no expectations or limitations on what people think that they should do, or any weird thing with the continuity, so they could just make them make one fresh and just run from there. But it doesn't make any also, sense. Also, I haven't. Also, I only I only thought of it. I only thought of her because we were talking about Spider Women and there, but I don't really care. Uh, whatever. Well, speaking of pandering to demographics, our, our last topic is going to be about Archie. And unfortunately, while their new reboot that is centered around young adults is getting a lot of critical acclaim, it's not making them much dinero. And they really, really need that money. If but only you were, got... But, but I thought they were making... Uh, they're, they're pushing ahead to make that TV show with the Archie kids. Yeah... They are, which it kind of cost them a little money. And also, they lost a printer, which is getting them delays in a lot of their comics, including their Archies, Afterlife with Archie, uh, some of the Dark Circle comics, and unfortunately, the Sonic the Hedgehog comics. But that's, that's a cash cow. That, that is. That is. Although, to be fair, if you wanted to talk to the president of Archie... He will want Archie to be their cash cow, so they can have a cash cow in which they don't have to pay licensee fees. What are you talking about? It totally works for Boom. Totally works for Boom. Boom when... Boom was a dud. In every sense of the word. Oh, God. Oh, oh, and Dynamite, too. Yes. Uh, Our good friend, the accountant, told us that, uh, unfortunately, Dynamite Publishing is about to go bankrupt. Oh, God. Yeah, try and try as he might. Alex Frost couldn't paint his way out of this one. But to be fair, like, the only thing Dynamite has was Alex Ross's projects. Right? More or less. I mean, I never really I never really felt strongly about any of the characters that they really had. I think, yeah, only Dynamite had that... And some of the classic King's feature characters, like uh, Phantom, Shadow, uh, Mandrake, Flash Gordon, those guys. Part of me just wish that Flash Gordon was in the in the class of characters like Batman, where he can c- continually gets reimagined. He does. Like Flash Gordon never really dies. But every time he comes back, he becomes less and less relevant. He hasn't been relevant since that 180 movie. And that's, and that's, and that's half because of the music. Flash. And half because of Brian Blessed. Ah, savior of the universe. Da, 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 da. Yeah, they tried to have a TV show, and it didn't work. Well, it was during sci-fi, during their creative bankruptcy. And they tried making it like... A super sci-fi Tron uh, Flash Gordon, but that wasn't really working. Yeah, I, I, I don't know. I don't know. But obviously, just banking on, like, old-time superheroes wasn't really working with Dynamite. And banking in on licenses didn't work for uh, Dynamite and or Boom. But it's not entirely Boom's fault, because most of their licenses were pulled from them because they were with another publisher now. Because they bought that publisher, Hook, Line, and Sinker. 
Wait, and who's that? Disney. Oh, wait, but I thought Boom had uh, G.I. Joe and Transformers, right? No. G.I. Joe and, I- and Transformers is IDW. Okay, sorry, wrong one. IDW is the com- is the one comic book publisher which is getting super successful oh, yeah. in owning all of your childhood memories. But uh, oh well, yeah, Boom had all the uh, Disney the Disney umbrella stuff, right? Yeah, they had the Darkwing Duck comics, the Ducktail comics. Uh, now, the, since, the, Mar- since Marvel is a subs- subsidiary of Disney, pretty much all that business gone, done, done. Well, the, to be fair. Do- the, the the same thing happened to Dark Horse and there's uh, they're um they're squeaking by, but they have they have more legitimately good writers, like people people have things from them that they that they enjoy that are original. They don't have as much consistent money, which hard. Oh, but... and Hellboy, they can always squeeze a lot of stuff from Hellboy. Uh, Hellboy Umbrella, because there's oh. other stuff from the Hellboy universe that sells consistent consistently for them. And Usagi's Jojimbo, though it's not like Stan Sakai's getting in much of a scent from that. Uh, that reminds me, when's the next uh, volume going to come out for that thing? I don't know, man. It's been a while. It was like, it was like two years. Uh, you know, considering all the things that happened to poor Stan, uh, true. I, I wouldn't mind if he takes a little break. But yeah, he, he probably has one last thing up his sleeve. And, uh, and honestly, I'm glad that Throughout the pressuring, he kept Usagi totally his because it would have been very tempting to just go ahead and give the rights to Nickelodeon to make off some money from that TMNT hype. But yeah, I'm glad he decided to stick to his guns and keep his character to himself. But no, in terms of like licenses, hold up, Carlos. Uh, yeah? Apparently, yeah, I'm missing. I'm missing two Usagi Ujima books. Two two books came out. Well, what Setsuo the. The alien book? Uh, no. Uh, Mainline Usagi volumes. Let's see. The last one I think I own is A Town Called Hell. I might have read Scorpion. But the last two volumes I'm very sure I didn't hear were 100 Jizo and Thieves and Spies. Okay. 100 Jizo sounds familiar. Thieves and Spies, totally new. But yeah, I guess you know it's still it's still going on. Plus, they have Sen- Senso, the weird alien tale that they had. Well, it's pretty much Osaki Ujimbo, War of the Worlds. Okay, guys. For, for those who may not know, Osaki Ujimbo was about a rabbit bunny, a rabbit bunny guard bodyguard. And it's, it's kind of hard for people that. not to know about Usagi, but you just have to describe it as this: is that rabbit samurai who fought the Ninja Turtles? But more or less, it's animal people. Ancient Japan. Senzo is pretty much, hey, let's take the contemporary characters of this comic. Now aliens come. And everyone's going to die. Unless, all of a sudden, the Emperor of Japan reveals a not-so-known hidden talent for engineering, and (laughs) he builds tanks. Yes, and the offset of an alien invasion... Edo uh, period Japan suddenly has tanks. Oh, so he is how uh, Japan sees itself. I see. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Lord Noriyuki. Yeah. Lord Noriyuki all of a sudden reveals, yeah, you know what? I'm going to help you. I'm going to construct some tanks. How? Also, the fuck is a tank? (laughs) You read the plot. Also, engineering. Modern engineering books. Yeah, I thought modern engineering never reached Japan until near the Me- Meiji period. Well, or at actually, least Western engineering. Uh, no, it did. It's part of the thing that helped unify the country. They bought our guns. How A lot of our o- guns. How, how do you think o- o- Oda Nobunaga killed all those other guys? They didn't do it regular style. They had some of the regular cavalry with swords, but they had guns. Lots of guns. Bought our guns. More daka. More daka. Exactly. So at least Dark Horse has uh, a lot of stuff to, to hang out with. But yeah, Archie's, Archie's bid to get into the whole young adults market that Image and Dark Horse seems to be conquering is falling in his face. And I really, really, really hope they don't fucking drag the Sonic comic along with it. So many bad things can happen out of that. You mean More. Sonic just not existing as a comic? And you only having that... uh. 
new Sonic comic to hope to look forward to? The new Sonic movie, you know? Yeah, that but that's neither here or now. But let's talk a little bit about that. Come on. <sighs> well. Look, all we, uh, you pro- if you've probably already heard that Sonic, there's going to be a Sonic movie, is coming out from Sony Animations, ironically, the company that killed their console business. And also, it's going to be a mixture of live action and CGI. And it's rumored to be heralded by one of the masterminds behind the Smurf movie. Yeah. The good news is it's been delayed to 2018. The bad news is it still exists. But what do you mean? You don't want to? You don't want? Wait, wasn't he also behind some of the Alvin and the Chipmunks movies? I, I, I have no idea. I uh, maybe, maybe. All I know, the only good light of this is that the animation will be handled by Studio Muir. Uh, yeah, it's the studio who made the animated cutscenes for Sonic Unleashed, which now, was really I, good. I have confidence that the that the, the animation doesn't look awesome. Everything else, on the other hand, yeah, yeah, I, I don't, I don't think this is gonna be good. I really don't think it's gonna be good. Even if they come up with a decent script, people are gonna hate on it. But that's not what I'm worried about the comic book. I'm worried that this will be finally have the chance for Sega to own all the canon. For years, there's been a split between the Western and the Eastern canon. Sega kind of like took over most of the canon once Sonic Adventure showed up and declared like, no, this isn't Mopius' is Earth and it's not Robotnik, it's Eggman. Wait, hold up. What is the difference between Western and Eastern canon for Sonic? Okay. One, Sonic does not come from an alien planet. He lives among the same planet as us, despite all of the incredibly surreal and nonsensical physics in his universe. So, viral loops are a natural con- occurrence somewhere on Earth. Exactly. And not only are spiral loops and gold rings, chaos emeralds are naturally occurring on Earth. Oh, ex- totally. Alongside, like, cartoon, at- cartoon anthropomorphic anteaters. But, coincidentally, of course, they're not everywhere, so we can still call it Earth because there's humans. I don't know. It's a lot of bullshit that Japan they wasn't thinking about. They just wanted to have a cool game. It was art. Um, it was America who came up with a lot of the Western stuff. But I thought yeah. both us and England we came up with the Mobius thing pretty much together. Yeah, and England kind of kind of had a compromise between the game and the American canon. They paid attention more to the games, but they realized, yeah, they didn't really understand what the fuck is going on. So they made their own version of the American canon that's a little more Doctor Who and Terminator than the Archie stuff that was a little more lighthearted. Yeah, because like, their Sonic is a little bit more... He's a dick. He's selfish. He's a dick and selfish, and then he becomes supersonic and he becomes a murderer. Also, all the animals don't look like Sonic characters. They just look like... Regular anthropomorphic animals. It's like fucking Looney Tunes or something. It's weird. That's why I can't really get into it. But what, because you're you're used to the Sonic Bubblehead style. Well, yeah. Even among, even among the Satam stuff, where you know in Archie, you either had characters that look like the Sega games or characters that look like you know they come from a '90s animated cartoon. But at least you know there was context to that. The artists behind the UK comic, they're like, fuck it, we don't know anything about this. We're just going to draw the way we can and just keep Sonic to, uh, among his official design. Otherwise, they're going to kick us out. But yeah, that was about it. But the Western uh, canon has always been like, everything is the games except the comic book. That was the last artifact of anything that's called Mobius or anything that references the cartoon series or anything like that. They canceled that? Sega will grab their chance to just finally declare everything that they don't own non-canon. Adventures of Sonic the Hedgehog, Saturday Morning Cartoon, Sonic Underground, the OVA, Sonic X. Why anything. would that even matter? I mean, every... It, I, seriously, why, why would that even matter? Because like, then... Sonic they, X doesn't, mention, doesn't get mentioned anywhere. Sonic Underground doesn't get mentioned anywhere. Uh, it Bad was M, getting mentioned... Sonic only really lives through the... Uh, through the Archie comics. 
Like that's the only thing that's been keeping those characters alive and bubbling in any in any form. They don't before, get referenced in any before, games. Before they were getting mentioned in the Archie comics as well. But yeah, ultimately Sega gave mandates to say, no, fuck this, it's not canon, it's not canon, you are only allowed this. If they fuck up, and I said, you know what, why the hell are we going to men- resurrect a comic book about a 20-year-old, 25-year-old canceled television show when we can just make a comic book that does what we wanted it to since the very beginning, advertise our product. So we will just get whatever canon they want. Sonic the Game, classic Sonic the Game, and Sonic Boom. And yeah, I really don't want to live in a future like that. And that's why I'm worrisome about Archie's stuff. Because they they really can't get their shit together. And ultimately, I think their Kickstarter would have been successful if they were honest. If they said, oh shit, we don't have the money to actually do this reboot that we've been hyping so much. But we already promised everyone everything. Can you please spare us some money so we can pay some expenses so we can then launch the comic? Yeah, I feel like that would have been more honest, but... Uh, according to panel.net, one of the reasons uh, Kickstarter banned Archie was they wanted to use it in order to break out of specialty comic stores and into mass market stuff like their digest. In other words, put comics back in the supermarkets. Yeah, but that that seems like a, a taller order. Also, it also, it also feels like it's kind of clashing against what people use Kickstarter for. Because, like... I feel bad for it, but it's it's legitimate for me because for Kickstarter, I feel like it's used for people to make a thing can exist on a small scale exist or a thing that already exists on a large scale that already has commercial success, even if it's not the one that they desire. It feels like they have other avenues to be able to get investors for those things while they have all these problems and it's really bad that they do. It just feels bad that they have to use that kind of source in that way. Yeah, it does. Not, I mean, I, I wouldn't really front on a major corporation asking for Kickstarter money. Because that is a serious red flag about what they're actually using the resources. And this is why I think doing that television show and getting that Broadway play and trying to do a movie is just dumb. I don't believe in any corporations would actually start putting all their eggs into the basket before they made a pretty goddamn good basket. Get a good (laughs) quality product first. Let that quality build a brand and then start whoring yourself. So you think they're just trying to throw a Hail Mary pass? Kind of. It's like what you said said with Marvel. No matter how the quality of of the movies, they have a very strong brand that people associate with a certain level of quality. So they can so, be able to make missteps for a couple of movies in a row before people lose faith in them. And of course, you have Marvel doing their own games, Marvel doing their own toys, Marvel doing their own theme parks, and Marvel doing their television shows and Netflix and ABC to various mixed results. But also but, having a varying amount of tones. But they have the strong foundation of the movies and the comic books, which provide fuel for the movies. So, you know, as much as I hate how they sold out, they whoring themselves out in the right way. Archie, just jumping on the bandwagon, thinking they're going to get a success with this? No. No, that's dumb. They're getting success, but it's building very slowly. And the lays just does not help that at all. Uh, yeah, finally, you wanted to talk, there is one book that you wanted to talk about. It before. wasn't a book, it was part of, actually part of an anthology. Really? What's the anthology called? I kind of forgot totally, actually. I just saw it online. Uh, you said it was a romantic story in a very dark, very weird tone. It's a short that uh, Bruce Tim did that... Wait, Bruce much- Tim? DC Animated Universe Bruce Tim? Yeah. Holy sh... Okay, okay, now you got my interest. Uh, I'm trying to look through my Facebook page because I posted it a while ago. Because it's pretty much a love story between... It's a love story between two people. I'm guessing man and woman. Or yeah, man, man on man. Really, really, a man and a woman who are really, really 
Really, really what? Really, really crazy. Oh, so it's Mad in Love. You know, the classic uh, Harley Quinn origin story, right? No, it's not that. It's um, it's pretty much uh, an, another story about two psychopaths where they, they just love killing each other. They just love killing people together. And it escalates from there. From pretty much hurting each other, hurting themselves. And uh, it gets even worse from there. And But I don't want to spoil everything. I'm trying to look for it. It's really, really good. Huh. You know what reminds me of that ABC show? Not LA Confidential. Uh, something. It, it, it was a show about two. Uh, it was in the 80s. And there was two people, a man and a woman who was a couple in Los Angeles. And they just happened to be serial killers. And like an FBI, FBI agent have, needs to figure out what is going on, trying to figure out their trail. And of course, it's like 1980s uh, L.A. So that is a really tall order for a, co- a cop in order to do that. What? What do you mean? It's hard to be a cop in a world without cell phones? Uh, more like it's hard to be a cop where everything kind of gets swept under the rug if you gave them enough money and if you look like a movie star. Yeah, it, that's how bad it was in L.A. Remember, that's how OJ got acquitted. That's well, why it was very I, hard. Well, I that and of course, of the legendary, the, I thought it was because of the legendary good work that he did with, uh, you know, those, those lawyers. And also, uh, and I, yeah, the, the, Chewbacca, the Chewbacca defense. The Chewbacca if, it defense. Rhymes, if it rhymes, you, you cannot, like, there's no defense against a it, No, no, no. It's if it rhymes, you don't do time. <laughs> oh, God. <laughs> We oh, miss God. you, Johnny Cochran. You were the best. God damn, but yeah, yeah, that that's how like those kind of cases were just thrown under the rug because as soon as someone uh, famous is in trouble, you know that they're in trouble, but they never actually face the consequences. Unless they're in drugs, then they go to rehab for three days. Yeah, yeah, so it's kind of hard to do anything in LA, but how short was it? Was there a uh, conclusion? No, it's, was... like five page. It's, like, it's just a five-page short. It's a really, really messed up story. I'm just trying to look through my Facebook feed. Posted a long time ago. Huh. Well, isn't that a, a wonderful Valentine's Day gift? Uh, murder? Yeah, sure. Yeah. Because you know you're, you, you're with the love of your life when they're willing to do mass genocide. Hooray! Shit like this is why I'm glad I'm single. Also, to whoever decided to go out today on Valentine's Day, oh my god. I really, really hope that you got like warm packs on your nutsacks, my man. Because when you head home and you try to do some loving... No, well, that's, uh, no that's when uh, pretty much you have to uh, invest in getting a Russian woman. <laughs> Oh, you said a Russian man? Russian woman. Ah. The brides. Woo. Duh. Duh. This is good. Harasho. Well, whenever you find it, be sure to put a link on it. And yeah, we'll, we'll, we'll figure it out. This is like the new, all new, all different bookshelf. We talk about the latest comic book news. And we then put a focus on our favorite book of the week. Or in this case, a short five-page anthology. Yeah. So, why don't you read us down on the social media links? We have Bookshelf Entertainment on Facebook. Our Bookshelf ENT on Twitter, right? Mm-hmm. And, wait, where's our... We are on the website, theouterhaven.net. Uh, where else, goes? We are Bookshelf Productions over at YouTube. And... Yeah, yeah. Mostly we are going to try to expand into other formats as well, depending on what we can do. And be sure we'll be bringing back... Bookshelf films? Bookshelf bookshelf merchandise? Yes, yes, we're thinking about that. Bookshelves? Who knows? And also, yes, we'll be trying to bring in more guests from uh, before. So stay tuned. We're, We're... 
we're going full throttle with this one. Happy Valentine's Day. Go see Deadpool. It's amazing. And this is Carlos Abdu. Carlos Asnable. Z Slash. Final thoughts? I am... I really want to see Deadpool again. So if you want to go see it, uh, we better make some plans. Yeah, I wouldn't mind that. I wouldn't mind that. Also, I, I would like to see that without freezing my nuts off. So, no problem. Stay... Okay, stay frosty, but not too frosty. And we'll see you later. Peace. Peace.